Bedtime Story. Welcome to English 101. I'm Jessica Costa, and today I'm going to read The Talking Tree and Other Stories by David McRobbie. So let's have a look. The Talking Tree. Zane was in the forest looking for nuts. He was hungry. He sat under a tree and ate some of the nuts he had collected. As he got up to go home, he noticed that there was a hole at the bottom of the tree. He put his head inside the hole and discovered that he could see the sky above. The tree was quite hollow. Zane pulled himself through the hole and stood up inside the tree. There was a smaller hole in the side of the tree. He could look out of it. What a good hiding place, he said aloud. No one can see me from outside. His voice sounded strained inside the tree. It seemed much louder than usual. Zane decided to sing a song to hear the sound. When he had sung the song, he decided to go home, but just then he heard someone talking outside. He knew the voice. It was Ali, a boy from his class at school. The singing seemed to come from here, Ali said, but I can't see anyone. Can you, Abu? No, answered Abu. I don't think there is anyone else in this part of the forest. Then Zane spoke in a deep, slow voice. Ali and Abu, he said, what are you doing on my land? There was no answer for a minute. Then Zane heard Ali say in a frightened whisper, who said that? I am the talking tree, said Zane. Everything in this part of the forest belongs to me. While you are here, you must obey me. If you do not, I shall come and take you away when you are asleep. Now, go and get me something to eat. Yes, O tree, said Abu. We saw ripe bananas on our way here. We shall bring some of them to you immediately. Zen heard the two boys run away along the path. He smiled as he waited for them to come back. Ali and Abu ran back a few minutes later with their hands full of bananas. They put them in a pile at the bottom of the tree. Here is the food, O tree, said Abu. I hope you like it. You have done well, replied Zane. Now you may go home, but remember, you must not tell anyone about me or about this place. If you do, I shall change you into frogs. You must come back early tomorrow morning before you go to school and bring some more food for me. I shall want something to drink too. Now you may go. Zane waited until Ali and Abu had gone. Then he came out of the tree. He was very pleased with himself. Ali and Abu will be angry if they discover who made the tree talk, he thought. They were very frightened. He left quietly. Next morning, Zane got up early and went back to the hollow tree. It had rained heavily during the night and the ground was wet and muddy. Zane stepped across the mud and climbed inside the history. He looked out through the small hole in the side and waited for Ali and Abu. A few minutes later, Ali and Abu came along the path. They carefully put a parcel of meat and a cup at the bottom of the tree. Zane spoke in his deepest voice. Thank you, boys he said slowly and loudly. You may go to school now, but you must come again tomorrow. 
they discover the secret. Ali and Abu walked away, but as soon as the tree was out of sight, Abu stopped and held Ali by the arm. Let's wait behind this bush, he said. I don't think that's a talking tree. Did you see those marks in the mud near the tree? I think someone was hiding behind the tree and tricking us. No, I didn't notice then, said Ali. But let's hide and see if anyone comes from that direction. A few minutes later, they saw Zayn walking along the path. He was eating the meat and drinking from Abu's cup. It's Zayn, whispered Ali in surprise. Shall we jump out and frighten him? No, said Abu. I have a better idea. Come with me. He ran quietly back towards the tree and Ali followed. They looked carefully at the muddy footmarks and discovered the hole at the bottom of the tree. Then they guessed how Zayn had tricked them. That afternoon, when school had finished, Ali and Abu looked in the forest for two long thin pieces of wood and some bamboo. They used these to make a ladder. Then they hid the ladder in the long grass near the hollow tree. Next morning, Zayn went to the tree again and waited. Soon, Ali and Abu appeared, carrying their letter. Good morning, O tree, said Ali. I have brought some fruit juice for you today. I shall climb up to the top of your tree and pour it in for you. Hey, no, demanded Zayn. Just put it at the bottom of the tree as usual. But Ali was climbing the ladder already. He left as he poured the juice over Zayn's head. Zayn coughed and cried as the sticky drink went into his nose and eyes. Then Abu climbed the ladder. I've brought you some honey. Some bees are still in it, but I'm sure they will obey you and not hurt you. Help, no! screamed Zayn, but Abu was up the ladder. He didn't have any honey, but he did have a big shell full of sticky yellow corn oil. He dropped it on Zayn's hair. He tried to get the shell off his head. Go away, he shouted. You must never come near the talking tree again. All right, O Zayn, said Ali, we shall obey. He and Abu walked away through the forest, laughing loudly. Thank you for watching English 101. And make sure you check out all of our stories. And keep watching and keep reading.